And good afternoon. Wow, what's on? Oh, I know what's on. Sorry. Mute that so we don't get that weird. There we go. So we don't get echoes and stuff. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Live. I'm Steve Leahy. We have um, Beatles guitars to do today. That's kind of what's on the um, the chopping block. Um, I've got a little bit of show and tell. I'll show you that Cincinnati painting, which was kind of the dominant thing last week. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we got. So hang out with me. We'll do some stuff and... Yeah, we'll do some stuff. All right, let me switch around this way. So this is the Beatles guitar. This is where we're at with this right now. Um, I've been working a lot on the background. I There was no, let me swap, hold on. Move this around a little bit so you get a better view of it. I think I can back out a little bit. No, I cannot. That's as back out as it gets. Hold on a second. Uh, I think I might have jacked up my camera, the HDMI plug, which is why it's blacking out like that. But uh, but anyway, so this is what we got so far. So I've been doing a lot of work in the background. There really wasn't any rhyme or reason with this. It's got to go, you know, I got to do everything anyway. So um, I did the flowers, but never finished them. Got to do it anyway, eventually. So I left that there. And then I just started working on the, the background figures on Facebook. Uh, I thought that would be a fun thing to do on fe the Monday night feed, and uh, I just kept going with it. So I uh, added the background, which is the, this is the blue that the album cover is normally, but then it fades into this, you know, the pearl color of the guitar. So I think it'll be pretty cool, too. The other thing I'll show you real quick with this is this is a, um, uh, a set necked guitar glued, to, such that the neck is glued into place. Um, so they, they're separate now because I painted everything. And clear well, I didn't clear it. Uh, Keith Hansen cleared it for me, but I also put the little logo on it. What I do is I this is going to my uncle who has the same last name. Um, instead of the Gibson logo, I kind of took the Gibson logo and changed it around and made it into Leahy. So this will eventually, once I'm done with my part of it, we'll glue that all together and then clear the whole thing one last time. So that is how that's going. So there's your show and tell for that. <clears throat> jump over and say hello to everyone dan what's up thanks dan thanks um yeah so we're going to do more on this part here uh today uh, i've got a bunch of stuff wc fields and all that that uh needs to be done a couple other my brother was on monday who's a super mega beatles fan and he knew everyone he knew who everyone was so um, i should look it up and get the guide so i can also know who they are but eh. all right i am going to cheer with my UK friends or whoever wants to day drink with me. So I have today I have um, Vibacious, which is Great Lakes Double IPA. And I've already done my running around for today, so I'm in for the day. So I figured I would have this with you guys, which will be fun. All right, show and tell. I'm super bummed about, I know, and I, I kind of abuse, this is a great camera. The camera that I use, the main cameras, uh, the Canon Mach, what, Mach 5? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I I think I uh, because of the way the, the camera is plugged in and I have it on a movable arm and everything. I think I just jacked up the HDMI plug in it, which is bumming me out. But um, if I have to, I'll send it out to get it fixed. Brandon, what's up, buddy? All right. So another quick. Well, I'll give you this. This is fun. Um, this is one of the 543s, and um, it's going to be gold leaf. It is gold leaf. So I've got the gold on this, but um, points to anyone who can tell me what this is going to be. Uh, good for you if you can figure it out. Oh, is that right? I don't even know which way it goes. Yeah, it goes this way, I think. <laughs> anyway, that's my gold leaf portion, so i got to finish that uh, today. I gold leafed it this morning, then usually I let it sit for a little while uh, just so that the, the sizing can really dry. And then, uh, then I keep working on it. So this will be the last one I'll do. But uh, it'll be fun. If you want to see this one finished, that's going to be a Monday thing. Uh, I've got a couple others already done, so that's good too. I think I, I can't remember if I showed you this, but I'll catch you up on what's going on with this too. This is the Cincinnati painting. And I posted this today because I'm working on the frame for it. So this is the backdrop piece, which is a piece of 040 aluminum. This is 060, so it's a little bit thicker. But the backdrop is usually 040, and this is why I, this is why I did the um, 543 in gold leaf because I had all the gold leaf out. 
uh, for this. So I go leaf that, that's gonna go on that. I'll use uh, 3M uh, VHB foam tape to put that on there like that. And then that will go into the frame, which currently looks like this. Doesn't have any glass on it yet. Back that out a little bit. Doesn't have any glass on it yet, but that's the next, well, one of the next steps. So this is the mounting block. It's just um, regular high density um, uh, particle board or, you know, um, you know, wood panel, whatever. Um, so there's basically two, two little pieces of it to kind of get, get it to the right height above the asphalt. And the asphalt is just kind of glued on there. So um, I did end up tinting the, the asphalt a little bit with some um, opaque black because there was a lot of quartz in it and it was, it was really distracting for the painting. So normally I just put the asphalt in and that's it. But this got a little bit of extra just to kind of make it work. So all this stuff is drying right now, essentially. Uh, so I can't really put it together or do the next step until this is, this is all dry, which will be tomorrow. Uh, and for any of the wood to wood, um, I use the uh, tight bond, the ultimate tight bond, um, which which once that's dry, that's going to be I mean, you destroy the wood to get that apart. So it's super, super strong. And then the back of this. Now, this is also that particle board, you know, the high density particle board or whatever they call it. But the back of this, what I do is I laminate a really nice piece of um, wood on the back. Uh, so that's that's what this is. You can't really tell now because I started sanding it. But once I oil this, this is all you can kind of see the tiger striping in it, the the um, figure back of this. So that's going to look really, really nice. And uh, with these paintings, I, I kind of go overboard um, with the back as well, just because, you know, these are kind of what they are, even though this is going to be up against the wall. Um, while you're holding it, it really is going to be pretty amazing. So I got a, <clears throat> I've already pre-drilled all the holes for the screws and everything. But the laminate covers that up. So I'll just hand drill the holes again for the framing wire and the corners. And, and then at the same time, you know, that'll that'll um, put the holes in this as well for the backing. And then uh, after all the holes are drilled, I'll clean it all out, blow it all out. And then I can put the glass in it. I don't like to put the glass in until the very last minute just because the glass is... If you put your fingerprint on it, it's hard to get that off. And if you get dust in it, it's it's a drag. So... Uh, so the glass is usually the last piece to go in. And then once the glass is done, it just kind of sandwiches all together. VHB tape holds the painting onto here as well. So it's removable, but it's also pretty permanent. Um, and that's what I want. So if it ever has to come out of the frame, it, you can do that without ruining it. Uh, so that's that's how that's going to work. So I will show, I'll post that for real when uh, when it's all done. I'm expecting probably Saturday to have that like finished and in, in, in the bag. Enzo, what's up? South Carolina is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I would love to be a little bit warmer, although I can't complain. Ohio's been, uh, Ohio has been great. <clears throat> Even this winter, again, I did, never took the snowblower out. I could have once when I, well, it, we could have used it. I was in Massachusetts when we could have used it, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, well, again, I can't complain. All right, hold hold on to your horses. I'm gonna try to move this again and hope that. Why is that like that? There we go. <laughs> it's all right. I got this. I'll figure it out. We'll get you guys in a good spot so that you're kind of, kind of off to the side, but kind of head on. And I'm gonna zoom this in in a second. There we go. Oh, oh, maybe it's. Oh, interesting. It's not that. It's this one. Oh, maybe I dodged a bullet with my poor camera. Maybe it's just the cable. Interesting. Anyway, you don't need IT problems. You're not here for that. All right. Where did I leave off? Oh, I was working on a WC Fields up here. Um, a lot of these figures are now... Well, I'll show you. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of mess around with a few of them. Um, I don't know who this is, but it's super creepy. And she's... I think it's a woman... And um, she's like this pale blue. So I painted her and she looks like, it looks creepy, but I'm, I'm just doing what they, what, what they have in the, you know, the album cover. So um, yeah, so we'll just get on it. Uh, let me see if we can do palette cam, I think. As soon as I swap that over. There we go. All right.
So I'll show you how I did the other ones and then we'll get a little bit of airbrushing in and it's going pretty quick. It really is. So these figures are not terribly detailed anyway, um, which is nice. So, hey, what's up, Bob? Roberto. It's been snowing all morning here in Utah, Brandon, but that's what you want in Utah. That's like, you know, when I was living in New England and you know, the, everyone goes to New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine to go skiing, and that's what they want. And they want, um, you know, they want, like, springtime skiing and early summer skiing, and I think that's great. So when I think of Utah, I think of skiing, and I know it's not all of Utah, but I think of skiing when, when I think of Utah. So I know people probably love it that it's snowing there, but I don't want that. It's like, you know, I've done that. I'm all I'm okay without snow. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna um, line this one up. This has got uh, the cutout when I painted W.C. Fields hat yellow, so I, it's pretty easy to line this up. But I just want to make sure that it's kind of where it needs to be. This might be too much of a copy, but now normally I would never put tape up here. Let me back that out a little bit. So I just put tape on the. I just put tape on the this fade paint, the, you know, the blue fade, which is usually really a no-no because what happens is when I pull that tape, there's a really good chance that I'm going to pull up this really light fade because it's not really stuck very well because it's so thin. Uh, but I've also, after I did the fade, I was a smart guy and put um, a couple coats of Autoborn sealer over this, the, the transparent Autoborn sealer, the 6000. That adds a, it just has a ton of protection to it. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I really shouldn't anyway, but uh, because you always run the risk. And if I pull a chunk of paint out of there, that's going to suck really bad because fixing a fade like that is, you know. And Brandon, see, I knew it. Yeah, see, that's it. I never got into skiing, one, because I'm a complete klutz and I'd probably kill myself. But, um, yeah, but I learned early on that well, I loved winter and the cold as a kid. It was my favorite season, but I, I ended up getting out of that. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm an, like a, an old cranky guy now and I sit on the, you know, the porch and yell, get off my lawn, although I do do that. Um, but, no, it's more like just I, I just really like, the warm weather now and and I've it has been this way for a long time it's not like I you know hit 50 and then I became you know wearing a sweater and well I am wearing a sweater but that's not what I'm talking about all right I'm gonna shut up now here we go all right let's just do this because I think hello oh I know what's going on with that sorry I don't mean for that to happen because I have my I only have like a dozen plugs <laughs> and uh so when i have to use like one of the camera plugs i'll pull the camera so that's why it's black there but there you go that's what we wanted all right i swear to god we'll get stuff done at some point so let's do wc fields first i'm gonna choose zoomed in on him yeah it is it's this it's this cable oh that would be amazing if it's the cable and not the camera so sorry about the blinking but All right, anyway, so I've got him here. I've got the copy on here, too. The tape might not be in the right spot for WC, so we might move the tape a little bit. Because what I have to do is I have to be able to flip this a little bit. So I'll put the tape over here a little bit more. And just for insurance, because I don't want this to move, I'm gonna, you can't see it, but I'm going to put a piece of tape down on this lower right-hand corner over here, too. This is just to keep it from, you know, moving around in a, in a way that I don't want it to move. So I'll just drop a piece. And this FBS tape is great for just about everything, including this. It doesn't have a ton of tack to it. So, again, it, it lowers the chance that I'm going to pull some paint up, too. Clint Eastwood, get off my lawn. Exactly. All right. So now I should be able to pull this away a little bit. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of look at that for a second and then kind of pull it away. Now, the template that I cut out originally on this... Uh, did a lot of the work for me, so um, so that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of home in on the darker parts. And this palette, I need to swap out the um, parchment on this now because it's 
pretty much um, filled up, but it'll do for today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of look at that for a second, and then I can switch over to the guitar, and I still have that kind of hanging in my vision. It's that persistence of vision thing that makes cartoons work, you know. Your, your brain holds on to that for just a split second after. So that's kind of what I go with. And this just makes life really a lot easier than trying to just trying to mess around with it. So I've got the guideline with the with the original spray, which is the basic parts of it, and then I can just kind of add the details in as as I go. And with these portraits, it's really really easy because they're all black and white anyway and then they're tinted. Uh the I think I mentioned this before. I didn't realize that, that all the figures in Sgt. Pepper were actually f like large size cutouts. And then uh, the artist uh, painted them by hand. Just put some, you know, some splashes of color everywhere on them, which is really, really cool because I didn't know that. So the Beatles literally walked in, just kind of the, you know, walked into the middle part of it and they took the photo and that was it. I always thought that was all done after the fact, you know, like the front part was real, but the back part was like Monty Python, Monty Python, you know, they just kind of put it in there. But that is not how it happened. The things you learn. So what's nice about it is for me, it makes it really easy because these aren't really, you know, that detailed or intricate, you know, the wax figures are because they were real. And the part uh, that I, you know, the portrait of my dad, you know, that was like kind of detailed too. But all these dudes in the back go pretty quick, which is nice. Because while I want this to come out, you know, as good as I can do it, it's also uh, something that needs to get off the bench. It's been here, like I, I've had the guitar for over over a year, almost two years now. And really didn't do anything with it, just because everything else was kind of going on at the same time. All right, so what I've done is I've just got like the basic darkest areas. There's still some shading and stuff that needs to be done, but that's going to be done with the airbrush. So instead of, I've got this all lined up really well. So instead of moving on and pulling it and doing all the airbrushing, I'll ju I'm just going to kind of keep going with it uh, and do some of the other figures. Because then when I hit a, hit the airbrush... Part of it, I'll be able to do all of these dudes. You know, I'll just be able to put the shading in on everyone. And I'm going to do my best to kind of keep an eye on the comments. So if you have a question, just uh, shoot it out there and let me know. Um, I think, do we have... Let's see what we got here. Hang on one second. We'll do this. There we go. So members, the people who pop up in green, who are amazing and support what's going on here as you guys are all amazing. Uh, but the people who are members actively, you know, financially support what goes on here. And I deeply appreciate that. So one of the perks is they become randomly become moderators on the feeds. So I just made a. Uh, Brother Rob, the uh, moderator. What I didn't, I'm learning too, so with this stuff. So what I didn't realize is I, you, you actually turn it off. Um, if you don't turn it off, they stay moderator until they're turned off. So if uh, Simon shows up, Simon will also be moderator. Is my head in the way like this? I don't want that. Sorry. Um, so what I'll get better at is like, you know, just picking a moderator for the feed and then, you know, kind of, Sw swapping out, you know, turning other people off and giving everyone a chance. It's fun. Moderators have the ability to uh, to kick people off, to ban people. They kind of help watch the feed to make sure we've been really lucky and we haven't had any, um, you know, random trolls lately, which is fun. So, but if they show up, the moderators can take care of that too. And if you are chosen for a moderator and you can't stick around, please don't worry about it. It's not 
a big deal. We'll just grab someone else who's hanging out and that's how that's going to work. They also get a discount on the store and all kinds of other fun stuff. So, and once I figure out, whoa, once I figure out the, um, get back on the schedule and everything, uh, I think they'll also be able to get early access on some videos too, especially Tech Tuesday. I think that's going to be the one that I'll be able to put up early. Some of them, um, like the open studio doesn't make sense to really, I mean, I suppose I could do early access for those videos too, but I like doing the premiere with that because I'm here and I can, you know, watch it with you guys and answer questions and, you know, we have a good time. So I want to keep doing that. So early access on that doesn't make too much sense. I don't think. What else we got? <clears throat> Poured here yesterday, sunny and 70. I like that. Like that. We were 70. When were we 70? Monday? Yeah, Monday, I think. Tony Curtis is down here. So, again, I'm just kind of bouncing around. And what I'm doing, like I said, I'm just getting the dark areas, the darkest areas in. And it's nice. Again, this is, pr even though it's detailed, it's pretty, pretty loose, too. So, um,. So this is nice. If you're learning to draw, this is a great way to kind of get into it as well. It trains your eye to like really see, you know, like to see different shapes for what they really are. Um, so it's a great way to, to kind of uh, to kind of get your, your eyes trained. Um, so it, it does help just across the board, too, which is nice. So it, it certainly helps, you know, kind of making sure things are in the right spot. But it also helps with your regular drawing skills as well, which is good. So I'll shaded. Yeah. I want to say this is Victor Borga, but I don't know the, the comedian, piano player. I could be wrong. Again, I need my brother for this. There is a bunch of charts too, you know, with like lays out who everyone is and everything. I just... I had it, but then I, I keep forgetting to have it ready for the feed, which would be smart because then I could just tell you who the people are. But uh, what fun would that be to be prepared or anything, you know? That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, let's, um, ooh, another creepy, I don't know who this is either. Let me move this down a little bit since I realize we're kind of, there we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. And this looks like Steve Buscemi, but I know it isn't. <laughs> Buscemi. And this looks like Nixon. I really should get the list. I feel like I'm letting all my Brits, Brit friends down by not knowing. And um, if I if I remember right, what my brother said, I think Lenin picked almost all of the characters if if that's what I heard when I when he was on the feed Monday uh Tony 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 what do I want to do with Tony might as well do Tony too we'll just yeah we'll knock him out we'll leave creepy person here on the side So my goal for this this project is um, I'm I'm going to be hopefully be traveling back to Massachusetts uh, in June for um, for my grandson's baby shower, which is exciting. My very first grandchild. So that looks like it's going to be in June. So I'll be traveling back for that, and then my goal is to have this done for that trip so that I can uh, drop this off with Keith and have him clear it. Uh, and then that'll give me time to bring it back and just kind of button it up, anything that's left really. Uh, and then I'll be able to deliver it. We have a big family reunion in July, the end of July. So the goal is to have it ready for July, like done and not, I'm not gonna put it together. That's, that's gonna be on him, my uncle, but, um, I'll have the neck glued in place and 
all that other fun stuff. So that's the goal. I, I, sh I, should, I should be able to hit that without a problem. Um, I just don't, you know, this is such a big, all right, now that I've got this, I'm going to pull this off now because I don't need it. Um, it's just such a big project though. Uh, you know, it, what worries me is if it gets kind of put aside again, uh, because other stuff is going to happen, which it will. So that's why I'm kind of front loading this thing. Um, I answered the door when I come back, bam, <laughs> I know you're all blue now. I did prepare a drink. Well, by preparing a drink, I, I just opened one. So again, I'm all done. I did all my running around this morning. So I'm in for the afternoon, so I can day drink at least one. All right. So now I've got all the, and actually there's some that I haven't done the airbrushing on. So I'll be able to do a bunch of stuff here with you guys now. Um, move this over a little bit so you're more centered. Um, so now the fun part is just kind of grabbing the airbrush and then just dropping the shading in. Um, like starting with this dude right here. So we'll get this over here and then I'll just run across and clean them up. Now for the black, since this is really, really tight stuff, you know, kind of, well, let me swap my glove over. So I have the, the, you know, the painty glove on this hand when I'm doing the paintbrush so I don't get my fingerprints on here. But um, normally I have two of these, but I don't know where the other one is and I'm just be being lazy. And so what I, what I would do is when I'm airbrushing, this hand is on the surface, my left hand. So I'll just swap the glove onto my left hand. This is why these gloves are so great uh, because they work on either hand. So, and yeah, I buy these in bulk. I, you know, I just get a bunch of cotton gloves. So these, I use them for a lot of different things. Um, with all the fingers, I use them to handle artwork or handle the UV glass, which doesn't like fingerprints on it. Uh, plus just once the artwork is all framed and clean and goes into the flat file, I don't want to put my grubby mitts on it again. So I use the gloves for that too, but they, they're kind of cool. So anyway, more than you wanted to know about cotton gloves. Let's make sure that's focused. All right, <clears throat> so for the black, I've been doing a thing. So you guys know that I use the opaque black and white and all that, and I pre-reduce all that stuff. You shake this up really well. So this is the thinnest version of this. It's one part paint to 20 parts reducer, and I don't often use this mix. I do use it on like portraits because it, it is the, it's the softest gray basically. But what I find is I, I need to give it a little bit of more spike. So what I do is I go five drops of this, one, two, three, four, five. And then what I do, there it is. Oh, I'm running out. I got to mix more of this up. Is I mix in the 40, 50, 40, 11 mix, but the one to five. So it's got one part 40, 50 to five parts reducer. So this is gonna reduce it even further, but that, that extra little hit of um, 40, 50 is what I'm looking for. So five of those, one, two, three, four, five. Then I mix that up really well. Shouldn't do this over the painting, but what could go wrong? There we go. So again, that the, the opaque black doesn't need the 40, 50 but it does help smooth it out a little bit makes it a little bit more transparent and uh and for this type of really super fine detailed shading uh, that's just what the doctor ordered for this stuff now can i switch over here yeah i can all right enzo 75 tomorrow or today oh i know it's march and i know i shouldn't be praying for 70 degree weather and here in ohio but that sounds nice. I love it around here when, you know, I can swap to shorts and, you know, don't need a sweatshirt and all that fun stuff. All right, you guys are, just want to make sure I'm not in your way. All right, so again, this is really, 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 really transparent now. But the nice thing about it is because it's so thin, I can get like ridiculous ridiculously close to this thing now and just put in like the softest shading and with a ton of control and again it you know it's really thin so it takes a long time to build up like if I needed to like paint in his hair or something 
this is not the, the mix to do that with because it would just take way too long to build up that to opacity. So this is just what I use to kind of get the, and I kind of pushed it a little bit too hard there. Um, this is what I would use to just get the shading done. Like on the side of his head, it just barely puts it in there and it's just really, really nice and controlled. The downside is if you're not used to working with paint this thin, uh, it's really easy to do what I did like on this, uh, this side over here where I just had a little blowout. And it, I mean, you can't see it. It's so small or fine. Oh, that's awesome, Bob. Bob, I still got to talk to you about doing that project too. I know we talked about, you gave me a, a, the photo for it. Um, it kills me that half of it is in shadow because I don't know if there's enough info in that photo to get the job done. And I, I you know, I'd really want to make sure I'm seeing everything the right way. So I might hit you up at some point and try to come up with a solution for it. I mean, I haven't really like, like messed around with it in Photoshop. Sometimes when you have, like I have a, uh, it was too much too, but it's all right. Sometimes when you have a photo that doesn't seem like it's going to work and I can take it into Photoshop and really like kind of mess around with it. I haven't done that with the photo that you gave me yet, um, which is why I want to kind of bump heads with you because um, I may not need another photo and you have the patch by itself. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so that's good. Now the woman next to this, this dude here, uh, oh, I should do his nose. Um, the woman next to him is really washed out, so I don't have to do much shading on her. And again, I apologize to my heavy-duty Beatles fans. Um, me not knowing <laughs> who these people are, but... I already did the shading on this dude here, the Uncle Fester-looking dude. And this guy is really that orange, this little guy right here. He, he, I don't know why they made him so orange, but... And I did the shading on Creepy Girl, so yeah. Okay, good. The Steve Buscemi guy. Buscemi. I don't even know how to pronounce his name, even though I think he's awesome. And then WC. All right, so again, I've got all the darkest areas done on like WC Fields. Can you guys see what I'm No, you guys can't even see what I'm doing, right? And we're going to switch. We're going to swap. Let me, so you don't have to go on the ride. I'll switch to this camera for a second. I'm going to move you guys off to the side and way closer so that you can see more what's going on here. Come on, baby. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so this will get you a lot closer, but uh, you'll be at a bit of an angle now. But I think that's going to work better, too. That way my head won't be in the way either. La 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 There we go. How's that? Yeah, that'll be better. At least you can see what's going on now. Make sure we're focused on Mr. Yeah, this will be much better. And thanks to everyone who stopped by um last night for the uh razor blade. That's I'm glad I'm back in on that now. It's a lot of fun. That's going to come together really quick, too. I should, um, I should be, uh, the usually, usually the blade paintings, like just standard cars, like the Mustang, uh, they, I usually have about 10 to 12 hours in them to get them done. And, um, we're already about halfway there. We're on episode eight right now. Nine, I think was last night. So there should only be about 20 to 20 four episodes um, for that that whole project. The only thing, I've, I've got the frame put together for it as well, but what I need to do is I need to get a little bit of um, carbon fiber. Um, so I got to order that because for me, I mean, to make one sheet of carbon fiber is like crazy. Like it's just easier for me to buy a sheet of it. Um, and it's just for the backdrop anyway. I like doing the carbon fiber on the on the newer cars that you know, have carbon fiber on them. It's just a really nice background and it. Um, it makes a lot of sense for the vehicle. So I got to get the carbon fiber for the back, 
drop and I've already got the frame for it. So I just have to put that together. So it's, it's all going to come together. And then I am going to finish. I have the frame for the uh, Harley painting finally um, because I was away so long and all that fun stuff. So I finally get the frame for that. And uh, so randomly you'll see a um, open studio pop up for the end of the Harley painting because I want to make sure that everyone sees everything on those. My WC Fields looks a lot like um, Curly from the Three Stooges. Uh, I don't know that that really bothers me at all, though. <laughs> Again, you know, I want this to come out really, you know, really great. However, I understand that there is, you know, a certain element of just kind of just kind of get it done too. So, plus for this for this piece, I've got the you know I spent the most amount of time putting dad in, and that was the most you know that's what really needed to happen. Um, so if the other parts are just a little shy, I'm okay with that. And I mean they really won't be. They'll, they will be maybe to me, but not too bad. The other thing I'm having a hard time with this whole thing is really not overworking the, the, the portraits in the back again, because these things, I'll just jump down to uh, the next one, which is down here. Um, because these things are so washed out anyway, um, move you guys down just a, just a hair. There we go. So you can see everyone. Um, because they're washed out anyway, you know, I, I got to avoid the, urge to like really like go nuts on them all I'm gonna have to switch to a little bit heavier black to do some other stuff which will be good I'll kind of show you how the whole thing works but like I said this just allows me to get like these really super fine soft details that you know I could do with the, the paintbrush but the airbrush when it when it's working just does a, a better job at the really soft stuff you know Oops, a little bit too much. So if I do go too much, I don't know if you saw that. It kind of blows out a little bit. The, again, this paint is so thin and it, it just takes a soft eraser. This is a Tombow eraser. So a really soft eraser will, you know, just kind of work it out. We'll just kind of make it come right off. So again, though, the, the downside is if I took a big piece of yellow masking tape, like 3M, like this stuff, the really aggressive masking tape. If I took a big piece of masking tape and stretched it over this and then ripped it up, I would rip up all the soft shading that I'm doing right now. It would just come right off because it doesn't really have the ability to stick really well with it because I've reduced it so much. Um, however, when I go to clear it, all the clear kind of melts into that, locks it in, and then it's it's you know bulletproof. So it's just the the in between stages. You got to be real careful with it. And that's true with any fade, really. You know, like the blue up top here, even though that's um, opaque, regular opaque daylight blue and a little bit of um, opaque white, super strong, like really aggressively sticking paint. But as I fade it away, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm, it just doesn't have the ability to stick because it doesn't have like wet paint all around it. You're dealing with just individual particles when you have a fade like that. So you just got to be careful with it. Again, I, I want to work, I want to like kind of do all this other stuff on WC Fields, but it's just, it's just not there. You know, it's, um, you know, I want to shade the side of his face and do all kinds of other stuff, but it's just, you can't see it. It's just not there. So I'm not going to push it. Okay. This dude here, and like the jacket and stuff, this was talking about, oh, actually, kind of screwed up. I didn't even realize that. Kind of screwed up his nose here, too, a little bit with that. So, again, if stuff goes in where it shouldn't, the peach color for his face is, is not very um, reduced. It's pretty thick. So, I can pretty confidently erase on it. I mean, you don't want to dig in, 
because you'll you know you can erase through it but if I just kind of lightly work the eraser on like the parts that I just painted with the black I can get the black off without damaging the the peach underneath which is really nice because it makes it so that there's not much that can happen plus I kind of blew up his nose there a little bit at the end so what I can also do is grab a little bit of white paint and some uh, that's red oxide. I didn't want that. I want uh, umber. There we go. So if I grab a little bit of burnt umber and white, I can make that skin tone really fast. That's that's all that that was. So what I can do now is I can just like reclaim parts that got out of control. Like I kind of clipped the tip of his nose here. So let's see. So I have a feeling it's gonna be too light, but we'll see. Nope, it's actually fine. So just kind of reclaim the tip of his nose, and then he's feeling much better about life. It's such a small area, too. It's like just uh, uh, it's kind of dark. Okay, good. Dark is okay. So I'll grab some white, lighten that up a little bit. There we go. Let that dry. Good, 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 good. All right, back to it. Um, all right, so yeah, this is a good spot. So what I'm going to do next is, what's going on there? Let me finish his eye over here first. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this color out and I'm going to switch to a more opaque black. It's still really... Um, really thin it's going to be one one part paint to 10 parts reducer so it's really really thin but you'll see like for his uh for his jacket which is this maroon colored jacket needs a lot of shading on it the area down here below wc fields his jacket needs to be you know really black or dark it would just take way 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 too long with that other one i could do it but i just literally have to put like a hundred coats of paint on it which that sucks so I'll switch out to a little bit darker black. I'll do it up here first because you'll see it. So I got to get rid of the original. The real thin stuff is still in there. The, but once I get through that, which just kind of happened, I could see it. Now I can really just fill this area in. Now I still have a ton of control with this. It's still really over reduced, but it's got a lot more pigment in it than that last version that I just used. So this will cover really quickly, but it'll also let me kind of do this with control. So I don't have to mask everything off all the time. I can just kind of freehand it in. And that's nice because then I can add a little bit of like, it's just in, instead of just painting this whole area black, you know, I can kind of put a little highlight, a little, you know, area of light on his shoulder. So which would be tougher to do if the paint is more unruly, you know, if it doesn't want to work with any kind of control. Same thing with the top of uh, Tony's hair here. I've, I kind of put it in, but I didn't really smooth it out. What's going on, on the side of his head here? It's dark, too, because I think it's the hair of the person. Oh, I just blew that out, too. So again, this is really, really thin. So I, if, if I push this, I can still have it spider web everywhere, especially on the guitar because it's so smooth and non-porous. So I still got to kind of work with some finesse. And it's the same deal here. Like if, like I had a little spider webbing on, on that. That's easy because her face right there, or his face, I think it's a girl, um, is the body color of the guitar. So I can use an aggressive eraser on this and just literally just erase the the extra spray right off again i'm spending time right here there's a pickup ring a plastic pickup ring that's going to cover most of this anyway but um yeah oh there we go your mystery lady is mr dylan thomas poet nice thank you this one okay who's this one the this this one right here 
Let me know who that is. Because she's super creepy. I did screw up the... Uh, I'm screwing up gender a lot on these because, like, I can't really tell. So I feel bad to the to the person that, you know, that it is that I'm misgendering them. But um, my apologies. You are a... lovely human being regardless all right so again down here in, in uh in the jacket i can shade this now because it won't take very much paint to do that and that's how it is in the image you can see it it fades down to a black but then up at the top you can see the light on it and it's like this red deep red maroon color so <sighs> That's Mr. Thomas. Oh, this one here is Miss. This is a Mister. This the, the blue one. Oops, sorry, Mr. Thomas. Swore you were a uh, a lovely female. <laughs> I am gonna get the list. I I will definitely get the list because I I do feel super bad that I'm you know flopping around and not knowing who everyone is. All right. This dude up here, he's got heavy shading on him, so I can do this with the with this version of the black. I don't need the real subtle black because, like I said, he's really well lit from one side, so um, so the shadows are really aggressive, which is good. You know, just means I don't have to keep swapping the the blacks around. Normally, what I would do is, you know, anywhere where I had the really soft shading, like on WC Fields, anywhere I'd have that soft shading, I'd do all of those first and, you know, then swap out to the darker color. But with this one, yeah, you can just kind of go for it. So again, like, you know, I put in his eye and his eyebrow, but all the shading, are, like on the upper lid of his eye, it just pops in with the airbrush. And that's the beauty of this. That's what really does a great job for me it's like the the strength of both of those tools really just like shine so i'm not like stuck with one that can't do everything i can use the tools that do the best job so same thing like in the shading on the side of his nose is a lot darker his cheek which you can't see because it's under the pickup ring but oh well yeah, yeah, it's good. What's going on down here? Oh, I had it right. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get not bored, but I'm going to like kind of get burnt out doing all these people. So when I when that happens, then I'll stop and then I'll do the, do the flowers down below. You know, the the rest of the beetle flowers or whatever, and you know the the bass drum and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, the nice thing about having a really super, like, crazy complex painting like this is you can do that. Uh, you can bounce around. And, uh, again, there's no, even though there's there really is a foreground and a background in this, it's really all pretty much the same. Um, so it's not like it makes more sense to do one part than another. They all just kind of blend together. Uh, so that's, that's lovely, too. Now, I didn't do this gentleman's face, um, so I'm going to not do the shading, but I can do like his hair, which is really dark. And then right before we uh, break, I'll pull the camera back so you can kind of see everything for what it is. That's good too. Yeah, she's really washed out, so I'm not going to mess with her. She looks good. So I should really, yeah. Um, the next job is to finish up these this group right here. Um, but I think that's where I'm going to call it, only because I've only got one of the 543s done so far today. I've, got, I've started two others, but um, I've really only got one done. And I try to get three to four of them done on Thursday so that I could just kind of knock out the last one on Friday and take a, you know, get back to all the other stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to back you guys up here. Let me swap to this so you don't have to go for the ride. Um, but that gives you a good, good view of it. But I'll get you a, a better view. What am I doing? I'm hung up here. Stop it.
Saw that? There we go. Yeah, this will be good. This will give you... Move this a little bit. So that's the kind of overall view from that camera. And then this camera has the head-on view. Come on, man. What are we doing? Yeah, this camera has the more head-on view. There we go. So yeah, so that's what we got. A lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. It'll be fun. So if you have any questions, if I missed anything, Franz, what's up? That's all right, Franz. You got the end of it anyway. Yeah, so that's what we got with that. Uh, let me swap. Oh, I had to work out these cables too. There's just too many wires and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, as far as um, the total number of hours on this, I have no idea what it's going to be. It's going to be it's going to be crazy um, when it's finally you know all said and done. Um, but you know it'll be worth it. And again, you know the whole point of the whole thing. I'll move this because it's less confusing. The whole point of this thing. Let me back it way out. Was that we got you know we got Dad in like he's part of the album cover, which will be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's what we're looking at. But yeah, I mean, once I get this part done up here, I mean, I've really got about a quarter of the painting done, which is, which is going to be great. I mean, it's amazing. There, and there's not, there's some stuff going on right here, but you know, not like on the other side. So that should go pretty quick too. Uh, and then of course, getting the Beatles in again, the whole point of this was to get dad in and that made sense and have the Beatles at the bottom. When this guitar is finished, uh, the actual beetles heads are like cut off they're they they pretty much get split by this pickup uh so really you know it's interesting that you, the, the layout just kind of worked that way the other thing would have been to drop it down low enough that you didn't see the beetles it would be like down to here but it just didn't look right and it seemed like there was a lot of extra space up top so that was the compromise that i made the other thing too is there's a bridge piece that goes right about here and then there's this, the um, intonation saddles, which is kind of like another bridge that goes right here. So those are also going to be drilled into this guitar as well. So you lose a bunch of stuff there too. But again, with these type of things, including like the razor blade too, you're going to lose something. So it's just a matter of picking, you know, the, the best composition. And, you know, that's kind of what, what, what I think about when I do these things. So, yeah, progress is good. So now this will work, right? Heck yeah. All right, let me turn this off so we can get this out of the way. And I'm going to unplug this for now because this is the one that was giving me a problem. So I'm going to check this cable after that one. Anyway, we don't need that. Now we can move this out of the way and we don't have to worry about that. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so there we go. So that's what we got. Uh, thanks for jumping by. Um, I only had two sips off of my day drinking beer, so... Uh, but I hope you guys had some cheers. That would that would make me happy. Um, again, I, I'm working on revamping Tech Tuesday, making a little bit more polished. So that's why there haven't been a release on Tech Tuesday. Um, there's a lot of informal that goes on around here. The live feeds are really, you know, just kind of off the cuff. And um, one of the things I wanted to do to just kind of increase the overall quality is have something, some portion of it a little bit more polished. So the open studios are live, essentially, even though, you know, they're not. There's no breaks, no editing or anything like that. Uh, the live feeds are the same. So really, the Tech Tuesday, I wanted to kind of polish that up and, uh, and get that in better shape. So that's why you haven't seen them. But I will get them back up. Uh, and that's what I got. So for all of you, thank you so much for jumping in, hitting that like. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and get all the, the fun stuff that goes on. And uh, to the members, I uh, cannot thank you enough. You guys are awesome, um, and I appreciate it. And that's what I got. So have a great weekend. Be good to one another, and uh, I will catch you all next time. Thanks a lot.